readers uh, are curious just how your your life is on on the space station. And uh, for Satoshi, um, two readers, Chris Maxwell and Adrian Ruiz, they're wondering what you miss the most about uh, Earth, uh, your life at home, and if you ever feel lonely up there. Well, uh, with regard to everyday life, <laughs> I miss a uh, hot bathtub most because it's it's a kind of Japanese culture, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, to uh, sink in a hot bathtub and relax, it, it's it's awesome. So I miss that. But uh, living on board the station is very good because uh, we perform scientific scientific experiments, and we have. Uh, excellent uh, Earth view and star views. So uh, I like working on board here. Great. Uh, thanks. A another question, and this might be for you, Ron, um, uh, is, is from Trisha Harvey. And she wants to know uh, how the aurora borealis um, looks from, uh, from space, uh, if it undulates like it, uh, it appears to on Earth, or is it just a, a static glow? Well, that's a really good question. Um, it depends. It depends uh, where you are in the orbit. It depends wh where, um, you know, what part of the Earth you're over. And usually when we see auroras, you know, we see them come out towards the horizon. And uh, they're, they're, no matter where they are, uh, they're always spectacular. And, and yes, they, they look like, you know, dancing luminescent waves of, uh, of vapor. Um, it's just absolutely breathtaking. But I had one opportunity a, a few months ago where uh, you know I opened up the uh, shutters of the cupola and I was just you know blown away by this view. It, it seemed as though we were flying through the auroras. I mean, it was just this you know glowing vapor all around us, and it was just absolutely spectacular. So it's a uh, you know it's always is great to, uh, to see that. Mike's taken some great uh, photos of the auroras, so it's uh, you know that's one of the uh, fascinating things that we get to see uh, on a fairly regular basis up here. So it's. Uh, it's uh, you know, one of the, the joys that we have to see that. Thanks. Um, and uh, this question uh, comes from a, another reader, and uh, I was actually going to ask it as well. Um, you're several months into your increment now on the space station. Uh, you travel around the planet at uh, more than 17,000 miles an hour, and you've already had one visiting shuttle and several months ahead. Um, uh, we're just wondering, first of all, how the mission has gone so far, and does it feel like the time goes a lot faster in space because you're so busy than it does when you're on Earth? Well, um, yeah, it's been, you know, I've been up here, I guess, closing on five months now, and uh, it's been a very, very busy five months. You know, we saw two shuttle missions, uh, you know, the uh, undocking of a, a ATV. I, I, I can't even remember how many progresses have come, come and gone. So it's, uh, it's been very, very busy. Uh, we've had uh, Soyuz docking, Soyuz undocking. Um, but really, the, you know, the, the main thing that, that this time period, I think, uh, uh, is important for is we saw a transition. We saw a transition from the construction of the International Space Station to full utilization of the International Space Station. And, and we, we've all uh, been able to witness that and just see an amazement how, you know, the science that we're doing on board has just ramped up. And, uh, you know, we're, every day, you know, the whole uh, space station is, is fully busy, you know, cranking out science. And, uh, you know, I think that's going to lead to some really great discoveries. Uh, I think it's, it's not only going to be, you know, a stepping stone for continued exploration of our solar system, uh, I think it's also going to show that, uh, you know, we've, the research that has been conducted on board here has improved life on Earth because it's, it simply can't be conducted anywhere else. So uh, seeing that and uh, being a part of that uh, has been very exciting. Uh, to answer the other part of the question, uh, looking back over the last five months, it, it, because so much has happened, it, it really does seem uh, like a long time. <laughs> it, it hasn't gone by in the blink of an eye because so much has, has been accomplished. Um, but, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, though, the days go, you, you're so busy, though, that the days uh, go by pretty fast. Thanks. And um, perhaps for, uh, uh, for Mike, um, this question from Ian Garrett, he wants to know, um, and I think I do too, what you see um, from life on the station are the top three improvements uh, that will be vital for, um, for say, a, to actually make a colony uh, living on a space station uh, uh, 
you know, viable? Uh, what, do, what do you really need uh, up there um, all the time to make that work? Wow, that is a really interesting question. The top three things we would need up here. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, to really colonize, you'd need to have a way, I think, to grow some food. We, you know, we eat a lot of the thermal stabilized food and dehydrated food, and in a lot of ways it's like camping food or uh, military MREs. Uh, that I think some fresh food would go a long way toward improving uh, uh, life on here, uh, you know, life in space. And we get a little bit on when the cargo vehicles come, they bring some uh, fruit and vegetables, and that's a delight to uh, bite into a, a tomato or even, believe it or not, to bite into an onion. We slice onions up into, uh, into big wedges and uh, eat them with a little bit of salt because it's a taste of earth. Um, other than that, I, you know, I, we, we have what we need. Uh, the, uh, the window views, are, I think, are really important. You, uh, if you don't have a window view, then you, could be, you may as well be working, uh, you know, in a trailer with a zero-gravity machine, which, of course, doesn't exist. Uh, but uh, the windows to see the Earth, to escape just a little bit and, and look at places below that you dream about visiting someday as you enjoy the, uh, the sights from above. Uh, I think the third thing that uh, would be really great if you're going to colonize uh, the space would be a transporters. Transporters would be really good so we could go home for the weekend. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think they'd be great here for life on Earth, too, uh, Mike. Uh, I, I would love to stay and chat with you all day, but I, unfortunately I'm, I'm out of time. Thank you all, Mike Floss and Ron Garrett, uh, Satoshi Prokawa, uh, for uh, your time today. And uh, uh, all the best for the rest of your mission. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, I think the last time I talked to you, I was living on the bottom of the ocean. So it's good to, good to talk to you again. That's right. It's great. Thank you.